I am a love that dare not speak its name. And I am a love that dare not stop speaking. My name is Vince Laws. I'm a poet, an artist, an activist, and I'm here in Brighton on the south coast. Beautiful Brighton. I love Brighton. And I'm putting on a month long happening. And I've called it the Be Right On Festival. Ha ha. Be Right On. I came down to Brighton to look to hang a little bit of artwork and I went into a cafe where I used to work. Actually, I used to clean the floors. No, lovely cafe. I still go there for coffee. And I showed the guy my portfolio and he said he loved my work, but it was too political for him to have on his walls. And so I set off on a quest to find somewhere where I could put slightly more political stuff on the walls really and that ended up being in the library and then I just put the call out it was a bit like throwing a snowball down a hill I kind of threw a snowball down a hill and said does anybody else want to come and get involved with Queer History Month LGBT History Month and uh, yeah other people did so I think we've got two poetry events and we've also got uh, Dougal Ferguson coming down with his Torrents of Rapture which will be a fabulous night a multimedia performance with him acting in front of a film screen and uh, there's also a women's queer music night towards the end of the month there's just some really interesting bits and pieces going on if I look a little bit tired that's because we had a wonderful launch yesterday we launched first of all in the town hall with the mayor Bill Randall councillor he came along and he blessed the pink triangle bless him we did some poetry, poetry for many voices, Hullabaloo Community Choir. My goodness, a lot of people came, it was good. There was Bear Patrol, which is a community group that does fundraising for the Sussex Beacon. And together we did Adopt a Pansy. So for five pounds you could adopt a small pansy. And uh, you get a certificate and the pansy was named and all the rest of it. Bill and the mayor got number one. And also there, there was Make Them Eat Cake, which was a uh, cake for a donation from Lunch Positive, which is a community organization here in Brighton that provides a hot meal once a week for people who are affected by HIV. And it's a really useful networking group, I think. Barefoot Wine came along, and they're a wine producer. And I have to say that before I met them, I wondered you know, I just thought they were out for a pink pound jolly. But actually, if you look up their website, they're very supportive of the LGBT community. And I think that's good for us. We like loyal supporters and we're loyal back. So thanks very much for them for coming along. And also there, hanging in the atrium space of the town hall, was the Hanky Quilt, which is an HIV and AIDS memorial quilt. And uh, I think it's a beautiful piece of community work. And that's going to be on display in Brighton Town Hall throughout February, which I think is a very important symbol of the town's support for those who are HIV positive or affected by HIV. And then last night we had a fabulous launch at the Jubilee Library. And the first hour we spent face painting 76 people to represent the 76 countries where homosexuality is banned. And we had even enough people to cover the eight other countries that are a bit dodgy, including Russia, which is in the news at the moment. So the estimate is that we had like 100, 140 people who stood underneath the band sign at eight o'clock. And while they did that, Hullabaloo Community Choir sang a beautiful song, Give Me Wings. It was an amazing turnout last night. I mean, there were probably 400 people there went so well. I did some poetry, of course, and we had poetry for many voices. We had a flash dance with members of the Rainbow Chorus and Brighton Dance Flash Mob Group. And then we had the Mighty Phantom with one of his tropical troubadours uh, singing three queer calypsos, including Who Put Pepper in the Vaseline, which I particularly enjoyed. And we had the fabulous Al Start Band She's got such a beautiful voice, I'll start. So she finished us off and a little bit more poetry and a raffle <laughs> in which I managed to give away one of the giant letters hanging in the main library because although they're giant letters at the moment, they'll make fabulous shower curtains. 
So as well as happening, I have some space in the Jubilee Library. I've got the main windows and in there I've hung the word band right across the windows in six foot high letters, blood red. I just wanted to contrast all the kind of straight lines that you get in the library and the perfect text you get in the library and the rows of shelves and the rows of books. And I, So I just wanted a bit of handmade text. And yeah, that fitted in with my theme. So that's what you get there. And then in the foyer of the library, there's a small exhibition space. And in that I've put the rainbow arch with the coming out stories from the Out 140 project. And then around the walls is some of my art, some of which is considered controversial. I've had to put a few little white stickers on things. And I had this Pope is pants hanging in the space. And in fact, there was only room to hang this Pope is and the rest I had to throw over the wall because the bunting was too long. But even this Pope is was just too controversial. I like to think about words and wordplay and how words can be made visual and what's the appropriate text or what's the appropriate way to convey a particular poem or a particular slogan or a particular theme. So, yeah, I like people to come and have a look at that, maybe be a little bit inspired to do some art or some creativity themselves. I think creativity is such a valuable tool towards well-being, mental well-being in particular. I've always written. I've written for a long time and written poetry, but I think it took me a long time to find my voice, develop my confidence, and it's just a matter of working away at it and repeating it. But the, I suppose one of the big turning points for me was testing HIV positive. And the silver lining of that is that you think, OK, I might be dead. <laughs> I'm going to die one day. Something that perhaps you don't think about so much beforehand. And suddenly that gives you an impetus to get on. And it's like, well, actually, OK, so I might not be here very long, but what do I want to do? And then I decided what I wanted to do was to be a poet and a writer and an artist. And also that I wanted to be able to respond to whatever was going around me. I didn't set out to be a protest artist, for want of a word, but I think I, I am a protest artist. And it's a very good time to be a protest artist. There's a lot of reasons to protest. And I just like the fact that I feel almost a responsibility to respond to what's going on, whether it be war or whether it be poverty or whether it be the way the sick and disabled are being demonized. And reflect that in my work, reflect that in my poetry and reflect it in my visual art. Yeah, I'm very interested in collaborating and pushing poetry off the page and pushing poetry into other spheres, so collaborating with theatre or collaborating with a choir. So, yeah, last night the Hullabaloo Choir sang I Am A Poem for the first time. Kirsty Martin, the musical director, has adapted my poem. It's, it's a wonderful experience, actually. I went to their rehearsal and you walk down this dark little alley and then in the back of a church and you hear this little sound away in the distance and as you get closer you realize oh that's singing my song not just my song but the song you know the words I wrote and there's like 70 people in the room filling it with I I I I am um, I am um, I poem you know so beautiful very nice and it seemed to be very well received so yeah no that's exciting yeah, no, it's great to come here and launch. You know, I lived in Brighton for 25 years, then I moved away to become a poet and artist. So to come back with a, you know, a good show, to put on a happening, very pleased about that. I am a love that dare not see its name. And I am 